Hi guys, welcome to Pencil College. In chapter 12.2, we'll be learning about further trigger equations. Okay, so here are the lesson objectives for this video. Firstly, we'll learn how to prove other identities using the identities that we have learned in the previous chapter. Okay, and next, we'll learn how to solve trigger equations that can be simplified to a basic equation form of sine x equals to k or cosine x equals to k or tangent x equals to k okay don't worry if it it looks kind of confusing now because we'll be looking at some tangible examples later lastly we'll learn how to solve some trigger equations of the form sine ax plus b equals to k cosine ax plus b equals to k and tangent ax plus b equals to k okay so let us look at example number one okay so we want to find all the angles between 0 degrees and 360 degrees which satisfy this equation. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that our x has a range of 0 to 360 degrees. Okay, so we only want x that is within this range. Okay, so how do we solve this? Okay, the first step will be to shift 3 cosine x to the right hand side of the equation. So I'll get this equals to negative 3 cosine x. Next, okay, I will divide both sides by cosine x. Okay, and these will leave, leave me with sine x over cosine x. Okay, and for the right hand side of the equation, I'll just get negative 3. Okay, and finally, I will divide both sides by 2 and at the same time okay just help you recall that tangent x is equals to sine x over cosine x so this is just tangent x equals to negative 3 over 2 okay and since tangent x is a negative value using our ASTC diagram we can conclude that we are in the sine quadrant or the cosine quadrant Okay, because only in these two quadrants, you will get a negative value for tangent of x. Let us first explore our example, oh, sorry, our first scenario where tangent x is in the sine quadrant. So my theta is up to here. Sorry, in this case, it's x. Okay, let me just erase this. Okay, so in this case, we have x up to the sine quadrant. And drawing our right angle triangle, okay, we will identify our angle alpha. Okay, angle alpha is our basic angle and it's always measured with respect to the horizontal axis. Okay, so in the first scenario, okay, alpha is equals to tangent inverse, okay, 3 over 2. Recall that to find alpha, you will ignore the negative sign over here. So tangent inverse, 3 over 2. Okay, and in the second scenario, okay, let's see, uh, let me just uh, use a different color. So in the second scenario, I will measure x from here all the way till here. Okay, so this is my x. Okay, and then I'll draw my right angle triangle. Okay, and then we will move on to x to identify our alpha. Okay, so this is alpha. Okay, so what are our two answers for x? So x is equals to 180 degrees minus alpha or 360 degrees minus alpha. Okay, and if you were to key this in the cal into your calculator for alpha, okay, you will just get 56.3 degrees for alpha. Okay, so alpha is just 56.3 degrees okay to one decimal place okay so x will just be 180 degrees minus 56.3 or 360 degrees minus 56.3 degrees okay round, simplifying this and rounding it off we'll just get 123.7 degrees or 303.7 degrees to one decimal place okay so that's all for example number one okay moving on to example number two okay we are asked to find all the angles within zero to two pi which satisfies this equation okay so this means that our y in this case 
the variable here is y okay our y is between 0 to 2 pi okay okay so how do we solve this let me just simplify this by showing you that tangent x is just sine y over sorry tangent y rather is just sine y over cosine of y okay so multiplying both sides of the equation by cosine y i will get sine y cosine y equals to 4 sine y okay and shifting everything okay or all the uh, expressions to the left hand side of the equation i'll get to this minus 4 sine of y okay and factorizing out our sine y okay i will get this equation over here okay so this means that we have two scenarios to deal with whereby sine zero uh, sine y is equal to zero or cosine y okay is equals to four okay so since cosine y is a positive value okay let, let us let me just deal with the second scenario first okay so since cosine y is, is a positive value we are either in the all quadrant or the cosine quadrant okay so in the all quadrant this is my theta okay i'm just going to speed up okay this is my y rather and uh this is my alpha okay so this is my alpha and uh, in the cosine quadrant this is my y all the way till here okay right angle triangle over here and this is my alpha alpha is over here so alpha is over here okay so now let us deal with the second scenario first i'll explain why in a while okay so cosine y is equals to 4 so alpha is just cosine inverse 4 okay and uh, you realize that you have problem okay solving this why is this so okay because if you okay so this is this is a uh, this you get an error in your calculator or you can just write it here it's not applicable okay why is this so because recall that the cosine function okay is always between negative 1 to 1 okay so therefore since 4 is out of the range okay since 4 is out of range okay this is not possible okay this scenario is not possible okay now so i i went through this process okay to show you that in scenarios like this okay you will just reject okay this case this scenario totally okay and you can reject it by writing not applicable okay any over here okay now how about the first scenario okay so to understand the first scenario i will probably draw upon your ideas or your understanding for the sine graph okay so let me just draw a sine graph over here to show you so recall that the sine graph is always between okay so the sine function looks like this okay so from 0 to 2 pi okay the sine function is between 1 and negative 1 okay and when is the sine function 0 it is here at 0 at pi and at 2 pi Okay, so we have three points whereby the sine function is zero. However, since the range of y is between zero to two pi, excluding the points zero and two pi, we will only take into account the point x equals to pi. Okay, x equals to pi. Sorry, y. Okay, y equals to pi. Okay, let me just erase this. Okay, so for those of you who are still unsure, okay, let me write it out for you over here. So y is equals to just pi. Okay. So if you if you still don't quite get what I'm saying, you can try pressing this in your calculator. If you were to press sine zero, sine pi, and sine of two pi, you will all end up with a zero. Okay. You end up with a, with a zero. Okay. Just make sure that your calculator is in the radian mode. Okay. So what does this mean? Okay, this means that there are three possible answers for y, which is which are zero, pi, and two pi. However, as I mentioned earlier, due to the range of y, okay, due to the range of y over here, okay, we will only take the value y equals to pi. Okay, so the final answer, y is just equals to 
pi. Okay, I'll see you in the next example.